Hey guys, it's me, the Dom Fanatic, and welcome to week two of the PGBL. Today, um, we're here for week two up against Mr. Chabry and his Kentucky Tie Flosions. Um, so if you didn't watch last week's game, uh, I recommend you do that beforehand, uh, giving you a prior warning. Uh, we did lose that game 3-0, um, pretty much to hacks. I, I reckon we could have quite comfortably won that game without the hacks, that, that turned the game away it did. Um, however, we did start the season off with a loss, so we are 0-1 heading into this game. Now, Mr. Chabry, I'm going to be completely honest, is an unknown quantity to me. I didn't know he was for a the league. He's a really nice dude, um, but I've never come across him or his team before, so I don't know what his play style's like. Um, I don't know what his draft uh, you know, knowledge and, and performances are like. So it was, it was weird for me to go into this game because... Team matchup, I felt I definitely had the advantage. However, I had no idea what he played. I didn't know if he was a genius when it came to making, you know, weird sets and things like that. So, um, it, was, it was a hard game to prep for uh, and to play because I didn't know how it was going to play out. Um, however, we have had the game done, um, and obviously I won't spoil it for you. But what I will do is I will quickly go over the teams. Um, what I will do first is I'll go over the Kentucky Teflosians draft. And I think he's made a transaction uh, for one month since, and I can't remember what it was. So my team prep might be off for something. I can't remember what it is. Uh, but my opponent has Chandelure, Chinchino, Gudra, Lantern, Scizor, uh, Mega, uh, Scrafty, Seismitoad, Toxpex, Typhlosion, Whimsicott, and Zapdos. So, lots of scary things um, that my opponent has. Uh, Zapdos, especially. Uh, Typhlosion could be a bit of an issue. Toxpex is just fat and gross, and we don't like Toxpex. Scizor is absolutely terrifying to my team. But otherwise, the rest of the team. Oh, Chandelure, Chandelure could be quite uh, frustrating for me as well. But the rest of the team, I wasn't too worried about. And I have to say, I think this is probably one of the one teams that I. Uh, I think I had an easier time building for out of the three games I've played so far. Um, you can see the 60 bot here, Mega Sizzle, Gudra, Typhlosion, Whimsicott, Toxpex, Scrafty. I uh, wasn't expecting Gudra, I really wasn't because I have so many things that can deal with dragons. I have uh, two fairies and a dragon type on my team, so I'm not really sure why he bought the Gudra. Um, spoilers, it's Assault Vest, um, but I, I still have Dragon Claw and I still have Play Rough. And even, I mean, like, yeah, it could be a good switch into Gudra, uh, into Gudra, into Greninja. Um, but even then, like, I, I think there were better things he could have bought that could potentially have dealt with it. Um, but otherwise, it's pretty much what I expected. Um, and I think the team prep really kind of worked for me. Um, so, going over my team real quick, I will leave a link to the poker paste. Oh, and also, I don't know if I've explained or not, it is currently absolutely boiling here, like 30 degrees. So, if you can hear my fan, or if you can hear cars and bikes and stuff like that revving, I'm not sorry at all because I need my window open and I need my fan on. And if I don't, I might die. Um, so, we'll go over the team real quick. Obviously, we've got Mega Mawar. Um, I won't go over the EVs and stuff, you can look at the poker paste if you want to look into that a bit more yourself. Um, we've got Play Rough, Fire Fang, Sucker Punch, Thunder Punch. As you can see, it literally matches up against this team perfectly. Sucker Punch doesn't really help too much other than against the Typhlosion, um, but against like the things like the Chandelure, which could have come. Uh, it would have completely shut down that Chandelure if it wasn't, you know, if it was like Choice, for example. Um, so that's really nice. Next up, we've got Choice Scarf, Kyrie in Black, with Dragon Claw, Ice Beam, Draco Meteor, and Earth Power. I don't remember putting a, a Draco Meteor on there, but apparently I did. Um, yeah, but again, like I said, he doesn't really have anything for Dragon type. Well, I say he isn't going for Dragon types. He's got Whimsicott, which is immune, but obviously weak to Ice Beam, and we'll just die to an Ice Beam. Um, and he's got Scizor, but he might be fearing the Hidden Power Fire. Um, as you can see on my team, we'll go for them anyway. I do have ways of dealing with this uh, this Mega Sizzle. Um, so, you know, the, the Dragon Coverage late game could be clutch. Um, next up, we've got Salazzle. It's a weird Salazzle, so I definitely recommend you look at the, the, this one. Uh, we've got Flame Knock Knockoff, Toxic Sludge Wave. Um, basically, I've fudged the EVs about a bit, so I've got Bulk, because I want to be able to Toxic, because he has got the Toxpex and he has got the Mega Sizzle. Um, Obviously, Mega Sizzle isn't going to be staying in or being switched in against the Salazzle. I definitely expect out of the six things he's bought, it's going to be Gudra and Toxapex. They're the things that are going to be switched in because Salazzle's got a really good matchup. Um, like, Sludge Waves can do a decent amount of damage. It one shots um, Whimsicott, Flamethrower one shots the Sizzle. Um, obviously, Gudra's not going to want to switch into a knockoff because, you know, it's going to be AV, like I said. And the Toxic. Um, I don't think Typhlosion will appreciate a Sludge Wave. Um, Toxpex doesn't want to get toxic, 
And I think Scrafty may be one of his best answers as well, but again, Flamethrower and Sludge Wave will be doing nice damage, so he really struggles, but I'm not. Originally I was just fully on specially offensive, but I decided not to go that route in the end. Um, I had some max specials, uh, max speed for something. I only needed 100 EVs uh, in this thing to deal with the Whimsy Cotton. This is all what she did bring, so this kind of works perfectly for me. And the rest is in HP because it lets me live as many hits as possible and, and get off as many knockoffs and toxics as possible too. Um, next up we've got the Greninja, Ice Beam, Spikes, Dark Pulse, Extra Sensory, again no Water Stab, I did this week one, um, whether it's the best decision or not I don't know. Um, the only thing here that is weak to water is the Typhlosion, he's got the Gudra, the Whimsicott and the Toxpex which all resist it. Um, none of them resist Dark Pulse, so while Gudra is AV, you know, just hitting Dark Pulse every now and then is great. But as you can see, more importantly, the whole of his team is grounded, um, so it will take spikes damage. And uh, he's only got well, he's got defoggers in Zapdos, uh, Whimsicott, and uh, Scizor. Um, I didn't expect it on Scizor. I would have expected it on Whimsicott on matchup because I think Scizor is definitely a lot more scary when it's bulky with like Swords Dance, Roost, Bullet Punch, and then like Bug Bite or Aerial Ace or something like that. Um, so I wasn't expecting Defog on that, and obviously can stop the pranks to Defog with Greninja, so I'm hoping that can come into play at some point. But the rest of the moves are there just for coverage, and I am Psyche MZ just for the Toxapex to nuke that thing because it can't switch in and then take a Psyche MZ. Um, next up we've got P2, which is uh, just max defense. Uh, Trace, he's got so many cool abilities in his mons. He's got Sap Sipper and Gooey on Gudra. He's got Technician, which I'm really hoping I can get because um, I have got Charge Beam on this, um, and that lets me kind of beat the Toxapex one on one. Um, I can trace Flash Fire, which makes myself immune to the Chandelure and the Typhlosions. I can trace the Prankster. I can trace uh, Regenerate, and I can trace Intimidate, or, well, not that I need Moxie, uh, or Shed Skin. So many things I can trace. Um, and then finally, uh, on the team, we have got uh, Flawgis, which is max special defense. I had to bring it because otherwise I had nothing for um, Eruption. Typhlosion, like that thing would have just ruined me. Even my Slazzle takes like 70% from it. Um, so I had to bring Max Special Defense. Um, I don't believe I was ranking Power Fire, I just kind of sucked, sucked up the fact I had to switch into my um, P2 whenever he had um, the Sizzle in. Um, Sizzle is going to be absolutely terrifying if it has superpower. I have zero for it, like in my draft at all, if he brings the right coverage. So I was absolutely terrified going into this game of the Sizzle. However, um, my lead, as you can see, is going to be the Greninja, my opponent's going to be the Scizor. My aim was to try and hopefully get as many layers of spikes up as soon as possible as I could. Um, because I want to find out, one, if the Scizor is the way of removing the hazards, and two, um, it will really start helping chip his team down uh, as we go along. So, going into the game, you can see I do in fact lead with the Greninja, and my opponent does lead off with the Scizor. Now, I have actually been able to see my opponent's perspective and see his commentary of the whole game, so I will refer to that when I can, um, mainly because I got this game recorded for me really late and I couldn't read the update, um, uh, the upload date. Um, I'm going to switch out to P2 because I do get the Technician and I have the Hidden Power Fire. If he's not a bulky scissor, Hidden Power Fire does like 90%, which is great. He can't reach on me, um, he'll have to die or switch. Um, he does switch into the Gudra, which kind of reveals this Gudra is the standard switching for my Greninja, which is understandable. But um, I didn't really expect, I mean, I kind of expected the Sludge Wave. Floor just is quite an easy safe play, so I do go into my Mega Morwell. And this is where Mega Morwell starts doing Mega Morwell things. Now, he has a Toxpex, yes. Um, I'm going to Mega Evolve into Mega Morwell. And I am actually running Jolly. Um, there was a reason. Originally I was adamant, but I think I decided to change it to Jolly so I could run less in speed and put a bit more bulk into this thing. I'm going to go for the Thunder Punch, and as you can see, this is max defense Toxpex, and it still does over half to a, an unstabbed move. Um, more while is just nuts, so we're now going to play around, like, you know, the prediction game. Uh, he, my pin switch is acting to Scrafty, it's a, it's a risky play. Because, yes, he's got Intimidate, but Play Rough would kill this thing, like, two times over still. I do go for the Fire Fang, just to check and see... Um, if you go into the sizzle, and as you can see, that's still done about 40%. Um, he's going to switch out because he knows he can't take a play rough, and he goes back into the top specs. Um, I think I still do go for play rough because, again, like it's a free move. Um, at minus one, it's still just like a reasonable, I say reasonable, it's the top specs. Um, but we have weakened the top specs a little bit, and we've also weakened the scrafty a little bit. Now, I'm really glad that I did manage to get the scrafty weakened a little bit because that thing was actually going to be a bit annoying for me outside of having floor just work. I'm going to go into my Greninja here, 
because it's my best answer to this thing, and that score does absolutely nothing. Um, I have a little bit of bolt because I didn't need all the speed on this thing, um, but I'm hoping here that I'll scare him out with the extra sensory. I'm not going to reveal it yet um, because I do want to get the spikes, and he does go into the Gudra, which is fine. So I'm able to get one layer of spikes up. However, I'm not going to be able to stay in here because this Gudra could have power whip, it could have thunderbolt, it could have like some fighting type move that gets one just to destroy Greninja's life, and Greninja's way too important in this game. So I'm going to this time make a switch into my floor just because I don't think I'll be Sludge Wave. He does click the Thunderbolt and this does absolutely laughable damage. Um, after leftovers it done a total of 9. 9 damage. Um, my opponent could keep Gudra in here and you know just keep Sludge Waving me but I would win on 1 on one, 1 because one I have leftovers and recovery. My opponent does make the play into the Scizor. Um, but I do make a prediction of some sort, and I do go into my Slazzle. I figure the Scizor is a safe switch into my um, my floor just on like any occasion, so I'm going to make that double. And I'm kind of grooving a bit here, you know, I'm, I've got in my opponent's mind, I'm making the correct plays. I'm going to click Toxic because Slazzle is the freest Toxic in the whole game. Can't miss, and it can Poison Steel and uh, Poison types. So I do get the Poison off on the Scooja, which is actually really nice, because I think the two best checks my opponent has for Greninja is the Gudra and the Scrafty. So Scrafty's going to be taking the spikes, it's taking a bit of chip already. I'm going to take, uh, keep um, Slazzle in here and go for the knockoff. It's a risky play because he could have had, had a muddy water, but um, as you can see the extra HP, if he didn't crit me there, um, I didn't even realise it was a crit at the time, or watching this back um, to narrate it, um, didn't even realise that was a crit, but that is kind of annoying as you'll see a bit later on because Slazzle's really useful. The amount of HP I'm at now, uh, plus two bullet punch will take me out. Um, from a offensive sizzle. So I'm going to switch back into floor just because I really don't care if you click Sludge Wave on me, it's going to do nothing. As you can see, I wonder did a lot more damage than the first one, but again, still negligible. This thing's getting toxic. He can stay and click Sludge Wave if he wants. I can just click, keep, keep clicking Synthesis at this point until it dies to Toxic. Um, however, I think I'm going to click Moonblast because it, it might have died to Toxic that turn, but I do want to get some chip damage off of this thing. And this Moonblast is actually really nice. So if he has Roost, it's kind of forcing him to go for the Roost. Um, I am going to have to switch out here because I haven't got the Hidden Power Fire. If I had the Hidden Power Fire, I would have clicked it on the switch. Um, but I am going to have to go into my P2. The P2 is like my only answer to this thing. If he has Sword Stance, if he has Super Power, I can take the Super Power. And I will kill him with the, uh, the Hidden Power Fire. However, what he does decide to do here is he does Mega Roll. And as you're going to see, he does actually click. Uh, the sword stance. I, I knew he was going to click it, I just didn't want to spoil it for you. Um, so he clicks the sword stance and he's at plus zero, and I'm like, oh god, no, he's going to have super power. If he has super power, I think I'll just lose. Um, however, he clicks roost, which is fantastic. And as I trace technician, my opponent didn't it didn't account for this. He didn't realise. He thought I was especially offensive, um, P2, but because I have technician, hidden power fire does an absolute butt turn. It does like 80%. So that roost was in vain, the plus two is in vain. He's gonna switch out here because he knows Scizor is still important to him. Bullet Punch can still put in a hell of a lot of work. Uh, he does make the smart play into his Typhlosion. I, I like I needed to click in Power Fire again to kill him, because none of my other moves would kill him. However, um, this also puts me in a sticky situation. I know this thing's gonna click eruption now. It's gonna do about 60% to me. I'm going to click Charge Beam and do some damage to this thing, and after the spikes and the Charge Beam damage, it's going to now bring it enough to a range where Eruption does less damage. It's also now a roll, so whether my P2 will die or not. I have to risk it, basically, and I live on free. I click the Recover, and now we're in a position where we're going to be recovering more health than he is doing damage with Eruption. I could switch out to my Floor just here, but Floor just really can't touch this thing. Um, he does switch out though into the top specs, which is fantastic. I can take this thing on one and one if he doesn't have toxic. Um, and I do click recover again. So now I'm P2 at plus one special attack at max health. And he's really struggling with ways of beating this P2. Why well, he didn't go into Scrafty, I don't quite know. But this just allows me a chance just to click click and charge beam and really put the pressure on his team. It does like 40%, so uninvested, unstab, plus one charge beam. Again with the technician boost because I traced it from the scissor, and I now get to plus two special attack. That score does nothing to P2 whatsoever, he doesn't get the burn. My opponent does get unlucky with no burns this game, I will admit that. My opponent has to switch though because Toxpex is checking my Mega Morwile and he needs it for this game. So he does actually withdraw it because he would have died to a second charge beam. 
I go for the charge beam, um, I get a crit, which I don't think really mattered. Um, but I do get the third special attack boost, so I'm now a plus 3 P2. This is looking really good for me. Um, however, Gudra does live on one. He goes for, my opponent goes for the Draco. Now in his replay, I don't know if this put him on tilt or not. He claims this mattered, like the mismatted. Um, I think tilting wise, yes, it might have. But I think that the damage from Draco wouldn't have been anywhere near enough to do a huge dent to this thing. And I would have just recovered it off, hence why I could recover. Because I knew Toxic was going to kill that. Um, I figured he was AV, so I didn't think he was going to rest. So in comes the Scrafty, which I think he could have done in the first place rather than Toxapex. Um, but I don't want to stay in. Like I take any hit, but Drain Punch will give him a lot of health back, and I don't actually have anything to do too much damage to him. So I'm going to go into my Philologist, ever expecting a Fighting Move or a knockoff. Um, because I'm especially defensive, this knockoff actually does a decent amount of damage. However, he's not going to want to stay in, and because he keeps switching in and out after one move, I'm actually wondering if this is like a Scarfed Scrafty, which is actually terrifying for me. Um, but he does go back into the Toxpex. I believe I clicked Moonblast. Um, I do have Psychic on this thing. I could have clicked Psychic, but what's the point? Because if Scrafty's gone now, Gudra's gone. Greninja just has a field day against my opponent's team. Um, however, here I am going to make the hard switch into my Greninja. Um, because I really don't think this Toxpex can touch me in any way. Oh no, sorry, I go into my Salazzle. This is where the crit's annoying, because in my bulk, I would have actually lived the hit um, from that Scald. Uh, but it does kill me off. And I could have potentially, I would have got a Toxic off or something, um, because his Gooch is dead, and I could have potentially Toxic the Toxic Pex. However, what it does do is it gives me a free chance to go into my Greninja. Now, this this screams Psychium Z uh, extra sensory to me. However, I'm going to set up a second layer of spikes, because I expect him to switch. I didn't expect him to stay in. He does stay in and click the Toxic, and I'm fine with that, because while Greninja's on the clock, it still has like five turns to wreak havoc on his team. Now, Gooch gone. And Scrafty's weakened. You can't really switch Scrafty into two laser spikes and a reasonably strong water move. So this turn I am going to click the Z Psychic. It's a ballsy move because he does have the Scrafty. However, if he goes into anything else, it dies or takes a huge amount of damage. So he does go into the Whimsicott. It's going to take a decent amount. I think it's like 20% or something from spikes. Do you go for the Psychic Z? And um, this whole turn of events here is enormous. So Psyche MC isn't going to kill, unless it's a crit. Um, but what it will do, it will bring him down, way down to the red. So I can just click a move and kill the spin off next turn. It's annoying I don't have Shattered Psyche for the Toxapex, for sure. But Extra Sensory is still going to be doing like 50 to 60 um, percent to that. Or maybe like 45 to 55 percent to that Toxapex. And I can flinch. So it's still a really good position for me. Here my opponent goes for Defog with Prankster. It's huge because, uh, and I stayed in W because one I knew I was faster unless he scarfed. If he scarfed, he's going to kill me off. That's fine, he can't Defog. If he tries to Defog, it won't work because I'm a Dark type. And my opponent just forgets about that, and that's fair enough because it's a new mechanic. And now he tries to Defog, which makes me believe Scizor definitely doesn't have the Defog. So I had the spikes up. Um, Greninja's in a really good position. If I have Hydro Pump here, there's a chance I kill if he's AB. Um, However, I am actually going to stay in. I don't have it. I have Dark Pulse, Extra Sensory, and Ice Beam, because that coverage is the best for the team. He does get back into Toxapex. Um, I do click the Ice Beam. <laughs> I, I don't get a freeze. That would be icing on the cake. However, if I did, you know, he could just click Scald next turn to, to pull himself out. But I am able just to stay in. I'm happy to let Greninja die now, because it, it, it's done the work. It's got two layers of spikes up. I am going to use this turn to get my third layer of spikes. I know he's got no defoggers left. This guarantees Sizzle will die upon entry, so I don't have to worry about Sizzle anymore. Opponent does recover. I think I still died to Toxic this turn. I can't quite remember. If I don't, I get a free extra sensory off. Great, if I die, who really cares? What this does is, this gives me free reign to go into my Kyrum Black. Can't go into Sizzle to bullet punch this thing anymore because he can't get rid of the spikes. And Earth Power decimates the rest of his team. He has this thing, he has Scrafty, he has Sizzle, and he has Typhlosion. Um, Earth Power does about half this thing he does, my opponent does quick school. And he, again, he doesn't get the burn, which is really nice for me. The burn wouldn't have mattered, because I am pretty much specially offensive, I just have Dragon Claw for strong drag coverage. Um, but what I will do is I will keep clicking Earth Power, because he attacked, he's now in a loop where he has to keep clicking Recover. And because he's in the back foot having to flip the cover, I'm pretty much doing the same amount of damage as he is recovering off. However, left over is he's gaining a little bit each time. But all I need is one special defense drop from the Earth Power. And my opponent knows that's all it takes. As soon as I get the Earth Power, he's forced to switch. Something dies because nothing on his team can take an Earth Power. 
Um, he does keep recovering. Like I said, there's, there's not really much else I can add to, to give much insight at this point in the game because it's literally me staying in, clicking Earth Power. He cannot touch me. If he clicks Toxic, he dies in two hits. Um, well, actually, to be fair, he could have Toxic and then switched out. I'm going to click, uh, keep clicking Earth Power and I do get the special defense drop uh, as my opponent recovers. So he does have to switch out here because he Toxpex is his best way of actually having a chance to beat my Kyron. Um, so all my opponent has to do here is to, uh, to me, is to go into Scizor and uh, sack it off. Because I still think as uh, P2 is still around, Scrafty will be really useful. However, one opponent does here, he switches into Scrafty um, to the Earth Power, which is questionable to me. Because Scrafty would have been useful, whereas Scizor was already guaranteed dead. So he could have just sack, uh, swapped into Scizor, sacked that thing off, and gone back into Top Specs. And we'd have rinsed and repeated the same thing over and over again. So my opponent does go back out into Toxapex, and uh, Toxapex gets what it uh, gets what it deserves. No one likes playing this thing. I go for the Earth Power, and I'm quite surprised, but I do get a crit, and it just one shots the Toxapex after the spikes damage. Um, the spikes damage definitely helped there. Um, however, I think again it would have been a waiting game to play until I get a special defense drop. He'd have had to have keep, keep clicking recover over and over again um, just to have a chance. But I could have just rinsed and repeat the same cycles before. In comes the Typhlosion because I know Sizzle's already dead when it, you know, switches into hazards because I'm expecting the Focus Blast. It creates eruption, fair enough. Um, but that Focus Blast does like the square root of nothing. Oh, my computer's gone to sleep right now. Um, so he does switch out here because uh, it's like the only way he can really help bring his differential down. He goes into the Sizzle. Again, should have sacked this off earlier. Um, to the spikes, while I do click Synthesis. Synthesis was a no drawback play because it was locked into Focus Blast or you switch into Sizzle, which died on entry. And this just kind of guarantees me the game. Um, all I have to do at this point is go and same with my uh, floor just because of the spikes. I can just click Psychic and it will kill this Typhlosion. And with that, I do believe that's a. Or Elfrio, one of the two, but we what basically what happens is we do get our first win of the season. So good game, Mr. Chabri. I did enjoy that. Um, it's always nice playing against guys I've never played against before. But I felt like we had a really good squad to take this team on, uh, and had a very good matchup, and, and the prep was on point just to you know make it as, as simple as it was. So um, thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you did enjoy and find the narration somewhat you know interesting and uh, insightful if you guys did enjoy make sure you check out uh, the rest of the links below for all the other coaches pgbl website because they don't do spreadsheets they do fancy websites um check out my twitter and everyone else's you know social links and more, most importantly leave a like subscribe if you haven't already um next week we're up against ominous acid someone i've known from the community for a long time um way before draft format was a thing way before twitter was a thing i'm pretty sure we found each other on like cerebi web chat or something like smoke on web chat you know those were the days. Um, and his Alamelo Alamamola or something. Um, I'm not going to pronounce that again because I probably got it wrong. So yeah, make sure you subscribe to see that uh, game next week. And I'll see you around. Bye.